when you get hired as a penetration tester or a security analyst, one of your main roles is vulnerability assessment. So what exactly is vulnerability assessment? Well, a vulnerability assessment is the process of defining, identifying, classifying, and prioritizing vulnerabilities in a computer system, application, and network infrastructures, and providing organization doing the assessment with the necessary knowledge, awareness, and risk background to understand the threats to its environment and react appropriately to them. So vulnerability is a situation that can be taken advantage of by a hacker or a penetration tester for their own misuse or actually for fixing the issue. So vulnerability assessment has three steps. So the first step is actually identifying the assets and the vulnerabilities of the system. The second step is actually quantifying the assessment and the third is reporting the results. Now vulnerability assessment is only a small part and pen testing is an extended process of vulnerability assessment. Pen testing or penetration testing includes processes like scanning, vulnerability assessment in itself, exploitation research, and reporting whatever the results are. So in the industry, one of the most widely used frameworks when penetration testing is Metasploit. So Metasploit is widely used in penetration testing, as I just said, and also used for exploitation research. So some of you might ask, what exactly is an exploit research? Well, in this world, there are tons of exploits and the way to approach each one of them is ever so different. So what we have to do is exploit all the research that is available to us and we have to find the best way to approach them. So suppose, for example, you have a secure shell login. So the best way to actually approach a secure shell login until my knowledge is that you have to get a backdoor access to this from the port numbers that you can scan via Nmap or Zenmap. Okay, so without wasting much time at looking at PowerPoint presentations, let's actually get started as to how we can use Metasploit. So Metasploit is a freely available open source framework that is widely used by pen testers as we just discussed. So to actually install Metasploit, which is easily available on Linux and Windows, I guess. Let me just check it out. So you go on your browser and you type Metasploit downloads. Now you just visit the first link. And as you guys can see, it says it's the world's most used penetration testing tool. And then you just download the Metasploit framework by clicking the download button here. So you all might also find a pro version, which is a paid thing. And this has a little bit of extra features like group support and actually helping a company work as an organization. But we don't actually need that when practicing our pen testing abilities. So for that, you just go ahead and download Metasploit framework and install it on your system. Above that, there's another thing I want to get, make you guys aware of, and that is Metasploitable. So when actually pen testing, we need a server or a website to actually pen test things on. So normally this is a very illegal thing to do without permission. So Metasploitable has actually created a server with a lot of vulnerabilities on it, and it's called Metasploitable 2. So Metasploitable 2 is easily downloadable from this link, and it's a VirtualBox file, so you guys must have a virtual machine software on your system to actually set this thing up. I'll also go through how to actually set up Metasploitable because it has a lot of configuration and network management to go with it. So we'll get to that later. But for now, let's get started with Metasploitable. So before that, Metasploitable is written in Ruby. And if you all know Ruby coding and you all know how to make exploits, you all can also always contribute to the Metasploit community. So Metasploit is one of the most widely used pen testing tools in the industry. So what exactly is Metasploit? Well, it's a framework. And what a framework is, is it's actually a collection of tools. So these tools are majorly used for penetration testing and exploitation research. Now one might ask what exactly is exploit research? Well, there are tons of exploits out there and there are tons of ways to actually approach them. And this only comes to us from thorough research as to how we can approach each and every exploit in their best way. So talking about Metasploit, well, it's open source and it's free and it's also written in Ruby. So if you guys know Ruby coding and know how to make exploits, y'all can always contribute to the Metasploit framework. Now talking about the download part, well, y'all can easily download Metasploit from its download page, which is www.metasploit.com download. I'll be leaving the download link in the description. and. Once you're on the download page, you'll see two versions. One is the free version, which is the original Metasploit framework, and it's the core framework that everybody works on. And then there's Metasploit Pro, which comes with a 14-day free trial. So Metasploit Pro actually has a few extra features, which is great for an organization, like it helps you work as a team. But if you're a guy who's just practicing pen testing like me, 
Metasploit framework, the free version is the absolute way to go. Now also, when pen testing, y'all will also need Metasploitable. Now Metasploitable is an intentionally vulnerable target machine for actually practicing your Metasploit skills on. So we'll go over the installation of Metasploitable later, but for now, let's go over Metasploitable. So once you guys have actually downloaded the link, y'all can actually install it on your systems and Metasploit actually has three interfaces. So we are going to be using the command line interface or the MSF console in other words, but you all can also use the GUI interface, which is called Armitage if I'm not wrong. So let's get started. So first of all, I've already actually downloaded Metasploit and installed it on my computer and you all can just do the same by pressing the download button as you guys can see. So to start up Metasploit, all you have to do is go on your terminal and so to start a Metasploit, all you have to do is go on your terminal on Linux. Well, we're starting a PostgreSQL server because first of all, the PostgreSQL server is the basis of all the Metasploit exploits that are stored and starting it will just make it run faster. So we go service PostgreSQL and start. So that should start up a service and indeed it has. So the next thing you want to do is go in and type MSF console. And that's going to take a little bit of time because I have a very slow computer and it's going to start up our Metasploit frame. So as you guys can see, we got a big banner out here which says Metasploit Cyber Missile. And it's the banner changes every time. Don't get worried if you have a different banner. And the main thing is that you should see this MSF thing out here. So this means we are in the MSF shell right now, which is the Metasploit framework shell. So let's get started by actually clearing our screen. So first things first, the first command that you might want to run on Metasploit is the help command. So help will tell us everything that we can do with this framework. So as you guys can see, there are a bunch of commands and the descriptions to go along with it. Y'all can give it a quick read and find the things that are interesting to you. So as you guys can see, banner is display an awesome Metasploit banner. Y'all can change the banner. As you guys can see, there are a lot of juicy commands like there's a banner command, which I just had used. So if you go and type banner, it'll give you a nice cool banner about Metasploit. And there are other commands which work very similar to Linux, like CD, which changes the current directory. You can change the color by toggling colors. And then you can connect with the host and all sorts of stuff. So Metasploit has a bunch of exploits. So before we go further, I want to make you guys aware of three important terms regarding Metasploit. So the first is a vulnerability and we had already discussed this that a vulnerability is a situation which can be taken advantage of by a system or a person who access. So the second part is an exploit. So what exactly is an exploit? Well, an exploit is a module which is a bunch of code written in Ruby on Metasploit that is used to target different vulnerabilities. And the third thing is a payload. So a payload is the action that you do once you actually have access to somebody's system. So basically, suppose you've hacked somebody and you've gained access to their system. Now the activities you do after gaining access is defined as the payload. So we just spoke about exploits and I told you guys that Metasploit has a bunch of exploits. So how do we see all the exploits that are there? So you go show exploits. Well, as you guys can see, we've loaded up a bunch of exploits, which is basically all the exploits that Metasploit has to offer at this moment. So let me just increase the screen a bit. And let's scroll completely to the top. Yep. So as you guys can see, show exploits gave us a bunch of exploits and it shows their name, a description, a disclosure date and a rank. So the name and description is, as it says, it's the name of the exploit and it's a short description about it. The disclosure date is when the exploit was actually released by Metasploit and the rank is how it has fared against the vulnerability it was released for since it was actually released. So as you guys can see, ranks range from excellent, great, good and stuff. And we have a bunch of exploits. So as you guys can see, there's an Android exploit. There's a Samsung Galaxy Knox Android exploit. There are a bunch of Windows exploit, Adobe Flash exploits, FTP exploits, MySQL exploits, ASP.NET exploits, and a bunch of other stuff. 
So as you guys can see, there are a bunch of exploits to use and it can get confusing and rather troublesome to search for the exploit you actually want to use. So as a pen tester, you can always go for the search keyword, which is basically suppose you know that you have a MySQL server which has a bunch of vulnerabilities and you want to test those out. So you simply go search MySQL. Now I'll search the database for all the exploits that are related to MySQL and present them to you. Okay, so we have our results. So as you guys can see, we have a bunch of MySQL related modules now. Now it, this makes it way, way easier if you're a pen tester and you're looking for MySQL exploits. Now suppose you choose your exploit and let's see, let's choose which one do we want to use today? We're going to just use this MySQL hash dump. So to actually use this, we have to copy the name. So double click on it and it'll just select it and then you go control shift C in your terminal. So that copies it. And so if you want some more information about it, you can always go info and then just paste in the name of the exploit. So this gives us a bunch of information, actually gives us all the information you need about the exploit. So it gives you the name that it's a MySQL password hash dump. Its module name is auxiliary scanner and all this stuff. It's licensed by Metasploit framework in itself and it has a normal rank. And these are all the options that you might need to set when actually using the exploit. And this also gives you a small description. So it says this module extracts the usernames and encrypted password hashes from a MySQL server and stores them for later cracking. So seems like pretty cool stuff you can do with MySQL server and its password database. So if you actually want to use this, so you have to use the use keyword. So we go use and control shift V. So as you guys can see, it's denoted in red out here that we are indeed in the exploit that we want to use. Now, the first thing you want to do when you're using an exploit is you want to go and say show options. Now, as you guys can see, these are the options that we actually need to set before using the exploit. Now, the options can be necessary or they can be optional. Like, so there's a password field out here, which is not really necessary, but will help your exploit if you actually provide it. But you need to provide the R hosts, which is the targeting host machine, and the port and the threads is already set. Now, suppose you want to set the R hosts, so you can just go set R hosts. And you can set it to whatever IP address you want. Like suppose you want to address 192.168.2.56, something like that. So and will that will set the R hosts. You can also set the number of threads. Now threads are actually what the threads mean in parallel processing. That mean how many parallel threads you're gonna run so that you have faster computation. So this means you need GPU power if you have multiple threads running. So let's set threads to 30 for now. So we've set the threads to 30 and then you can go show options again and see that you have indeed actually set your options. So we've set the threads to 30 and our host has also been set. So that was all about how you can get into a module, know, get some information about a module and how you can also use the module. So once you're done using the module or once you're done setting up the options rather, you can go ahead and run the command run or even exploit. And this will start actually running the exploit on the system that you want to. Now I've put in a very arbitrary IP address so, and that not have MySQL port running, so our exploit failed. Now, once you have tested out your exploit and you want to go back to the main MSF Unix shell, just go ahead and type back. It's as simple as that. So that brings us back to the MSF command line. So let's go ahead and clear our screen now. Okay, so it's time we do something interesting. So to do that, first of all, we need to go ahead and actually download Metasploitable 2. So to download Metasploitable 2, you have to go on this link. I'll leave the link in the description. So, or rather you can just go on your browser and type in Metasploitable 2 download. So Metasploitable, as we had earlier discussed, is a Linux-based 
distribution, and it's mostly meant for actually practicing your pen testing skills. So basically, it has a bunch of ports open on it. So it's basically just for your ease so that you don't go ahead and test it out on some valid website and then get thrown into jail because that's a very illegal thing to do. So go ahead and download Metasploitable 2 and then also download Oracle Virtual Box Machine or Oracle Virtual Box. So you all can also easily download that from www.virtualbox.org. And this is because you should never run Metasploitable 2 on a system that is connected to a network. You should always use it on a virtual machine because it's protected that way so that nobody else can access it. So to actually set up Metasploitable, once you've downloaded it, you go ahead and open up your virtual box. So out here, you have to go into global tools and you create a host only network manager. Now I've already created a host only network manager and then you go ahead and enable the DHCP server by pressing this out here like enable. Then you go back and you just go new. You give it a name like whatever you want to name it. I have already named mine Metasploitable 2 as you guys can see. So we're going to call this demo for just demonstration purposes. Choose a type to be Linux and it's Ubuntu 64 bit. Click next, give it a gig of RAM and you are going to use an existing virtual hard disk. So out here, you just click on this button out here and you browse to the place where you've actually downloaded and unzipped your Metasploitable download file. Then you'll get this virtual machine disk file. This is a VMDK file and you just go ahead and load it up. So I'm not going to do that again because that's just going to eat up my RAM and I've already installed it out here. So that was all about the installation and the configuration. So now let's get started and let's start playing around with Metasploitable. So once you're done downloading and installing Metasploitable on your computer, all you have to do is go ahead and start it up in your virtual box machine and the login ID and the password both are MSF admin. So first of all, we need the IP address of our Metasploitable server. So we go IF config and this gives us the address. So as you can see out here, our address is 192.168.56.101. So once you go ahead and start up Metasploitable, it's time that we go ahead and exploit all the vulnerabilities that is presented to us by Metasploitable 2. So to do that, let's head back to our Linux terminal again. So once we have the IP address, that was 192.168.56.101 if I am correct. So let's go and quickly get a little bit of information about that. So who is 192.168.56.101? So this will give us a who is on Metasploitable 2 and it'll give us a bunch of information as to how the server is set up, where it is set up, the ports that are open and various other things. So as you guys can see, this gave us a complete who is. So to get some more information about our Metasploitable server, we're gonna be using Nmap. Now, if you guys don't know about how to use Nmap, you can go out and check my other video on the playlist. I've made a pretty good Nmap tutorial. So we go Nmap hyphen F hyphen S and V, which is steel version, and we give it the name or the domain name server. And 2.168.56.101. So we've got a juicy result out here, and we can see that there's a bunch of stuff open. So as you guys can see, there's the FTP port open, which has a version of VSF TPD 2.3.4. There's also open SSH, which is 4.7 P1 Debian. There's also Telnet, which is almost miserable to have Telnet running on your computer. Then there's SMTP, there's HTTP, and there's a bunch of ports open, as you guys can just see on your screen. So it's time we actually use Metasploit, like a pen tester, to go ahead and test out these vulnerabilities. So let's choose these FTP things. So we have this FTP out here. So from the version number, which is given to us by the steel version flag on Nmap, we know that it's using VSF TPD 2.3.4. So we can easily search for an exploit of the same version. So as a pen tester, you would go search VSF TPD 2.3.4. So this should give us all the exploits that are available for this particular vulnerability. So as you guys can see, after a long search from the search VSF TPD, we found a vulnerability or an exploit that can take advantage of the vulnerability. So it's time we actually use this. So 
first of all, let's get some info about this. So info, let's copy down this thing and then let's get some info about this. So as this module description says, this module exploits a malicious backdoor that was added to VSF TPD download archive. This backdoor was introduced in the VSF TPD 2.3.4 tar.gz archive between June 30th and Vala Vala. So we have the options of setting an R host. It has an available target. It's provided by these guys and it's a pretty good exploit in my opinion. So let's go ahead and use it. So we go use and the name of the exploit. So it's visible to us that we've again entered the exploit module, which is unix slash FTP slash VSF TPD 234 backdoor. So what we are going to do is we are going to actually gain a backdoor access to our metasploitable system. So to actually make this more believable. So if you guys go into your metasploitable system, so you guys can see that you're in the root directory. So you can gain some root access by going sudo su and going msf admin. So we're now a root user in the msf admin or rather the metasploitable console. So if you go ls, we can see the various files. And if you go sleety slash home, we're in the home directory now. And if you do ls out here, we can see that there are a bunch of stuff. So there's an FTP folder, there's a hacked folder, there's an MSF admin folder, and there's service and there's user. So that's five folders, if you guys remember. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna gain some backdoor access into the system, and we're gonna create a bunch of folders in the home directory. So let's get on doing that. So to do that, we head back to our Metasploit terminal, and we go show options as we had already entered our exploit. So we'll go show options. So as we see, the options that we have to provide is the R host and the port number. Now the port number has already been set because it's 21, and that's where FTP runs, or rather TCP runs, and we now just have to set the host. So to set the host, we have to just put in the IP address of our metasploitable server. So if I remember correctly, it set our hosts to 192.168.56.101. So that has set our R hosts. So we can again check that if we've done it correctly by going show options. And we indeed have set our hosts. Now all we have to do is run the exploit. So we go and hit run. So as you guys can see, we have actually gained a backdoor service has spawned and it's handling and the command shell session has started. Now you might be confused as to why do I have this blinking line? Well, this blinking line actually means that you are inside the metasploitable server. That means we have already gained a backdoor access and this blinking line denotes that we are on the terminal of metasploitable 2. Now if you don't, guys don't believe me, let's do some experimenting. So as I had said, I'll create a bunch of folders in the home directory. So let's change to the home directory first. Or rather, first you can also do a who am I and it's tell you that you're the root user. Next, you go and do cd slash home and I'll change to the home directory. Now, let's make a bunch of folders like make directory. This is a test. So that should have made a directory. So let's go into that directory CD. This is a test. So we're already into the directory. This is a test. Now let's make a file called targets.txt. So that creates the file. So just to see if we have actually done it properly, let's go back to our metasploitable server. Now in the home directory, you go and type in ls again. Okay, so let's type in ls and see. So as you guys can see, we have created, a, this is a test folder and it's already available there. So let's go and move into that folder. So this is a test and we are already in that folder. So, and we had also created a text file, which was called targets. So that was ls and it should give us a targets.txt. So as you guys just saw, we gained a backdoor access into a remote system through a vulnerability that was available to us on the FTP port. So we first did that by scanning the entire domain name server of Metasploitable via Nmap and gaining some intelligence as to what ports are running and what ports are actually open. Then we found out that the FTP port was open. Then we went on to Metasploit and we found out exploit that vulnerability very successfully. 
we found out how to use the exploit, some information about that exploit, and in the end, we actually executed our commands. And we are already in that folder. So, and we had also created a text file, which was called targets. So that was ls, and it should give us a targets.txt. So as you guys just saw, we gained a backdoor access into a remote system through a vulnerability that was available to us on the FTP port. So we first did that by scanning the entire domain name server of Metasploitable via Nmap and gaining some intelligence as to what ports are running and what ports are actually open. Then we found out that the FTP port was open. Then we went on to Metasploit and we found out exploit that vulnerability very successfully. We found out how to use the exploit, some information about that exploit. And in the end, we actually executed our command.